Hey everyone, so today we are going to tune this entire room. I want to take you through the whole process of what it takes to tune the room, how to find the right position of your speakers. We got some cool lasers, we got laser levels, Josh is already measuring the room out, and uh, we're going to go through all of this on how to set up your monitors and tune your room. So um, we've, we've got our 38% rule, and that 38% can be in the front part of the room or the, the back part of the room. Um, and because you know of just basic workflow and room layout, Colt's chosen the front 38%. That's where he's been doing his thing for a long time. Um, but we also want to make sure that, for whatever reason, that 38% may not be perfect in this space. So we, we want to at least go through and take some measurements um, in different varying positions in, in the room. So what I've done is marked out kind of 12 inches between each mark, and we'll go through and measure those. And maybe we find that, hey, if you move it back 10 inches, 12 inches, 24 inches, the high frequency response levels out, maybe the low frequency response booms a little bit, maybe we avoid some, some modal issue. We don't know until we measure, so we're just kind of experimenting. Yeah, that's really weird. I mean, it still begs the question, what's going on? Even, even with the sub move, that makes no sense. we've got this big jump mm -hmm. on the left channel we don't so it's 80 hertz above 170 is peachy going back going back Okay, so basically we hit a dead end when it came to trying to get this room tuned and dialed in with the subwoofer. There's, there's some problems with this room, and if I'm being completely honest, it was a little, <laughs> it was a little bit heartbreaking. Like I felt like I kind of got my heart broke because ever since I did this room, ever since I built this room, and I did like the preliminary testing, it just looked super, super flat. It felt flat. I've done great work in here for three years straight. And finally seeing the data where it's like, no, there's actual, like actual problems in this room. It's a little bit of a heartbreaking situation for me. It might sound silly to some of you, but that, that's how I felt. So Josh from Focal was kind enough to hook me up with a studio designer and room tuner. His name is Gavin Haverstick, and he's done some really, really incredible rooms. So the next step is he wants me to send him exact dimensions of the room and like exact dimensions or like location of the speakers and photos from every angle. And then he is going to work up a solution for me to hopefully fix these issues. Fingers crossed. Because now that I know that there's actual problems with this room, it is gonna become my obsession to get it fixed. This is not an obsession that I had planned on having or needing to do or anything else. So yeah, we're, let's see how we can get to the bottom of this. If we gotta do any bass traps, if we gotta change room, tuning or like acoustic treatments or whatever this, this has now become a journey all right so i gotta take some measurements get photos let's do that okay so i've got gavin from haverstick designs here nicole hey, thank you for coming i appreciate it no problem so gavin is consulting me on fixing the horrendous issues that are in my room so i did a video a while ago on the, the sonic differences between speaker stands and we measured the sonic differences between them and uh that was supposed to be a two-part video the second part of that video was supposed to be me integrating a subwoofer that uh or that subwoofer right there and we spent about seven or eight hours moving that subwoofer around, trying to dial it in. And what we figured out is the more low end we pumped into the room, the worse the room sounded and the more exaggerated the low end issues that the room has got. And so when I started working on the Atmos thing, I was like, I have to, if I'm going to fix these low end issues, it has to happen before I dump all this money into this room and hang all these speakers everywhere and because I'm not changing that once it happens. Before we get on to what the plans are for my studio here, because we're gonna touch on all of this, 
Uh, there are links down below for all the gear that I use, and those links go to Sweetwater, and anytime you guys need any piece of musical gear, you can jump on any one of my videos and click on any one of the links in the description of any video, and once you're on the site, you can purchase absolutely anything you need, and if you use those links, and if you do that, it costs you absolutely nothing extra, but it goes a long ways to help support this channel and help me keep making content just like this. So thank you so much for using those links anytime you guys need to purchase any musical gear. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring this video. And I will also drop links below to Gavin's website, to Haverstick Designs, so you can go check out all the insane studios that they have designed and built. Uh, and it, there's some contact info on there if you'd like to contact him and get him to consult you for your studio. Let's talk about what we're going to do in my room, right right over there. And that's where you come in because uh, your studios are unreal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like so, so many of the studios. I'll throw some up on the screen. You guys have done some really, really awesome studios. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, we've been lucky to work on some really cool projects over the years and and yeah that's what we do we design studios and make them sound better that's awesome so in this one this will not be a ground up design this will be a kind of tweaking how do we manage the issues that this room has as much as we can mm -hmm. uh without starting over with it so mm -hmm. i think first could you kind of walk us through the issues that the room has frequency response wise sure yeah so um josh s stock from focal yep. have done some testing with you and and uh, send over the the uh, uh, testing results and so when you look at a frequency response of the room uh, a lot of the problems and this is the the thing with most uh, home studios is that it's it's low end related that mm -hmm. is problematic because uh, you've got wavelengths that sometimes are physically bigger than the room itself totally. and, and and so it's it's hard to reproduce those accurately and so a lot of the issues here is like 150 hertz and below. And, yep. and I know that when you did this room originally, you were saying like, and you did a great job with the, the stretch fabric system and, and, and doing, um, you know, two inch treatment mostly everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but the low end, it, it really takes, uh, you know, more thickness and, okay. and base trapping and things like that. So what we're, we're seeing here is is some spikes, like there's a, there's a spike at about 57 hertz um, that on average is about, I don't know, 10 decibels above what the average is. Uh, and, and that kick drum frequency range, right? Yep. So, and that peak to the low, there's like, what, a dip at like 80-something? Yeah, right, yeah around right around 80. 80. So mm -hmm. what's the decibel difference between that peak at 50 and the dip at 80? Uh, on this, we're looking at minus 5 compared to minus 32. So um, <laughs> a little bit of a change there. Is that 17, 18 dB, whatever it is, yeah. difference? Well, and, and with that peak at, at right around 60 being 10 dB above, you know, your natural tendency would just be to, to constantly cut the kick drum and make it a little bit softer because at your mix position it sounds way heavy yeah um, and then when you would take a mix out of the room you know it, it, it could um, end up sounding too thin and also to me like 60 Hertz in that ballpark is is like the the thickness of the low end but like that 80 to 100 is like where the power of the kick drum is sure so I'm by listening to this I'm probably always putting too much power in with not enough like Th girth and yeah. thickness yeah and that's why like tuning these rooms is so important and getting trying to get this stuff right is so important because you just hear what comes out the speakers and then you just react to that mm -hmm. and if you're making decisions based on bad information which is what's been happening in here mm -hmm. uh then you're gonna make worse mixes yeah i mean i always tell people like your room is lying to you. You yeah. just don't know what it is until you do some testing and totally. kind of dig into it a little bit. But. And then, of course, you know, I wanted to add the sub because I wanted just a little bit more weight down low. Mm -hmm. But really, when we're talking about the install of Atmos, it is which this, this video is not about Atmos. It's about fixing the problems in the room. But uh, we're going to add a second one of those subwoofers. Yeah. And so we already experienced the more low end energy we pump into the room, the worse this gets. Yeah. Well, and I would say, too, with adding having two subwoofers, it also gives you a lot more flexibility with uh, improving room modes just based on placement and settings mm. that you have in your subwoofer. So, Got it. Uh, obviously, uh, adding acoustical treatment and bass trapping and some of the things that we have planned for the room is going to be uh, a, a great difference in here. Yeah. But having two subs is actually going to allow you to, to maybe shape uh, the, the curve a little bit uh, just by changing settings and placement. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so can you walk me through, by looking at this chart, Mm -hmm. What what is the the game plan here? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so when we looked at this, we also did an acoustical model of the room, and, and we were uh, trying to see uh, what type of room modes were causing these issues. Mm -hmm. Because you have uh, a lot of different types of room modes. There's axial, tangential, and oblique okay. room modes. Um, and some of these frequencies line up with um, uh, an, an axial or tangential mode that we need to address. So and, some of And you, uh, you come to that conclusion based on the shape and the size of the room. Yep and what that mode would do mm -hmm. to in this room, and then you see it on the graph, is that right? Exactly, so okay. there's there's uh, you know room mode calculators and software that will, will yep. s simulate what these, these modes are gonna be based on the room geometry and, and size. Um, but then also there's a, a listening position here, and, mm -hmm. and you're sitting at a certain spot, and a room mode is gonna cause a different reaction depending on where you are sitting in the room. So like where Got you're it. sitting, where your speakers are sitting, all of that, uh, uh, plays into this. And so if we look at this and say, okay, hey, there's there's this uh, 57 hertz peak, well, that's going to line up with a room mode, and then we're going to have uh, a way to solve that issue or make it better uh, it. based on placement and type of treatment. That Got we're it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that being said... What are we doing? How are we, how are we fixing it? <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we put together some plans uh, and, and um, you know, really uh, the, the main things, there's there's some easy opportunities, I think, yep. uh, with, with uh, the way your room is laid out. And I think originally you wanted to have like a vocal booth in this corner. There was, and, yeah. And so you stopped the treatment short of that because yep. you were going to build a vocal booth. And uh, But this this corner is is bare that we're, we're facing right now. Mm -hmm. And it's a prime opportunity to put a bass trap there. Perfect. And, and you have a, a lot of space. And so we can make that bass trap big and, and uh, you know, handle... Uh, Vertical corner trapping is helpful for tangential modes, okay. and so some of the tangential mode issues that we saw, um, you know, that's going to improve that. Perfect. And and when it comes to this the base trapping, it's it's hard to overdo it in a small room. Like okay. it, it, you know, doing vertical corners, horizontal corners, mm -hmm. uh, all that is helpful. And so not only some of the vertical corners that we're going to to grab, but we're also going to uh, do some horizontal corners uh, where the ceiling meets the wall on the the back wall and the front wall of okay. the room. And that will help tangential modes that are traveling around the room in a different different fashion. Got uh, it. The vertical uh, corner traps help with certain tangential modes. The horizontal handle different ones. And, Got and it. by doing both of those, we're going to drastically improve things. Could you explain to me a little bit and everyone watching, like the, the differences, like I've got two inch uh, acoustic treatment everywhere and mm -hmm. everywhere is eight pound mineral wool mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Could you explain like what your preferred material is and your preferred thickness is for just general treatment? Sure. Because I'm guessing it's thicker than two inches. Yeah, I, I usually go minimum of four inch okay. uh, pretty much everywhere. Um, now, it, it gets a little tricky because when you're doing like the, the uh, four inch treatment or less, usually we're recommending something like an Owens Corning 703, 705, like yep. something that's a little denser. Yep. Uh, but actually when it comes to the low frequency side of things, using a, a lighter weight insulation mm -hmm. performs better. Like okay. we usually recommend uh, like a Knopf uh, Ecos 1.6 pounds per cubic foot insulation oh. for the base trapping part of things. Okay. It performs just a little better than the more rigid stuff. Well, it's so. very soft. Though. Yeah, yeah, it is. Because uh, normally you're looking at, you know, three to six pounds per cubic foot, and this is only 1.6. Got it, yeah. okay. In terms of like, you know, this is obviously a, a much more advanced situation that we're getting into. Mm -hmm. I'm always recommending people at the very beginning just like Google the the diagram for first reflection points yeah. and start with those sure. if you're doing it all yourself. Is there any advice that you could give for people like starting off that really don't understand all this? What's What's the things that they should be looking for and paying attention to? Yeah, I'd say the first reflection points is a is a huge one, and there's a thing called the mirror trick where yep. you can uh, find those first reflections by having a, a buddy hold a mirror and yep. shift around the room with the mirror parallel to the wall, and you sit in your mixed position and just always look at the mirror. Anytime you see the visual reflection of a speaker in that mirror, uh, put a little piece of painter's tape on the wall, and that's a first reflection point. Yep. And if all you did was that, I mean, things will clear up quite a bit. Because, Dramatic. Yeah, all yeah. the all the comb filtering that happens yep. in the higher frequency range. Now, if you just do that, mm -hmm. then you're you're sacrificing the low end. You know, yes. like the low end is not handled uh, quite as well, but uh, that's an easy first step. Uh, I usually recommend people to do that. Uh, the next thing would be to, to have some decent bass trapping in the room, and if, if you don't go to the extent of having something custom designed or mm -hmm. anything like that, there's some really good bass traps out there that can uh, do really well. 
if you have a rectangular room, it's really nice to um, try to uh, uh, do some room mode calculations and yep. figure out what frequencies you're going to have problems with. Yep. Because bass traps have roll off frequencies just like speakers do, and, and and so speakers are good down to a certain frequency, and they 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 just tail off. Okay. Same thing with bass traps, and so you just want to make sure you use a bass trap that's going to be effective at the frequency you have problems with. Yes. So obviously that means measure your room. Yeah. Got to measure your room and then uh, figure out the thickness and the material of the bass trap you need for the problem that you identify. Exactly. And yeah, it's placement, thickness, type of insulation. And yeah, I always recommend people to, to measure their room because mm -hmm. it's information. Yeah. Even if you don't solve your problem, mm -hmm. you know you have a problem and you can make kind of adjustments on your own just sonically like if you're like i know i have a 10 db peak at mm -hmm. 60 hertz i need to lay off of that that fader and make sure that i'm not not uh, cutting things too much got it you know got it well that comes down to like learning your room learning your speakers yeah so there's this, it's this weird thing to juggle between like how do you make sure the room is lying to you the least amount possible <laughs> right. and then also learning it because yeah. there's no such thing as a perfect room yeah right no definitely i mean if you in your low frequency response, if you can get that to be about plus or minus five decibels, so mm -hmm. a, a swing of ten dB max, yep. um, that's a win. You know, okay. it's like uh, uh, there's some rooms we've done, like there's one in LA that we did mm -hmm. that was plus or minus a dB and a half in that range. Woo! But they probably spent two million dollars on that room. You Holy know, it's just cow. like you get what you pay for yeah. type of thing. But uh, you know, if you get plus or minus five or even less than that, then you're doing pretty well. You know. So we're at plus or minus 17 or 18, right? Um, Is that what we said? Yeah, so we got minus 5, and then this is down to minus 32. So yeah, it's a 27 dB it, swing right now. Right now, that's the winner, but that would be plus or minus like 13 and a half. Got it. Yeah, okay. plus or minus 13 and a half. And you were talking about getting down to a 10 dB swing. Yeah, plus or minus 5 would be would be really nice. So okay. like on this graph, uh, you know, these are in 10 dB uh, increments. You'd love everything to be within one band of that. Got it. Can. Okay. So base traps. Mm-hmm. In vertical bass traps, we're doing soffit bass traps, yep. we're modifying the entire back wall, Yes, yep. and we are modifying the ceiling cloud. Yeah, the big thing on the back wall is we're making it a lot thicker than it is currently. Okay. Um, so uh, before, uh, or right now, it's it's two inches thick, right. and we're making it 12 inches thick. So it's going to be it. a full foot thick there, and it's going to have um, diffusers built into them. Yes. And, and so that's going to help as well uh, with, um, you know, especially when you're doing stereo mixing too, yep. it's, it's going to uh, feel a little bit more natural because yep. if you just absorb the back wall, it gets to be pretty dead sounding and, and a little, little lifeless. So the diffusers help bring some of that in. And then we're adding in uh, some additional two inch uh, thick uh, absorbers on the side because we talked about how we didn't really want to modify what was already there. Yeah, it starts to get, you know, it starts to get down to the point of starting over when we, when we get yeah. there because the track won't work if we go thicker. Yeah. Without modifying the walls, mm -hmm. the back wall we're modifying, but without modifying these walls, mm -hmm. are we going to be able to hit that target, do you think? I think so. Like okay. I, I think that we will um, definitely be uh, uh, night and day difference from okay. what you were. And, and not only that, the, I, you know, I don't want to underestimate the having two subwoofers and properly tuning those and placing those. Okay. That, because uh, there, there's different uh, schools of thought when it comes to, I mean, some rooms have four subwoofers, you know, and they'll, they'll, <laughs> it, it's crazy, but they're not even using it for um, uh, getting more low-end energy. Yeah. It's more the placement of it helps to cancel out some of the room mode issues. Got and it. So uh, having two subs will be, uh, obviously, there'll be an exercise of us going through and, sure. and, and uh, tuning them with, with Josh from Focal, but yes. um, it, it, that is, coupled with making these changes, uh, you, you're going to be really happy with it. That's awesome. Yeah. So in the final result, we're going to test the frequency response of this room with just the Trio 11s on the stands. I'm going to empty the whole room. We're going to test because I want a before and after snapshot. Um, so we probably need to do a empty the room, test the Trio 11s, and then make all the modifications, put the Trio 11s back in the exact same spot, test it again. Yep. But then we also probably need to go ahead and put subwoofers in 
and dial that so we mm -hmm. can really show off that difference that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think that uh, one thing we didn't mention, too, is that we're going to add some ceiling clouds in here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we are adding ceiling clouds. We add some ceiling clouds to the back, and then we're also making the, the front ceiling cloud thicker. Yes. So there's, there's a lot of different changes. Uh, <laughs> the big sigh from you, because you have to do it all. <laughs> uh, I, I just get to draw it on, a, I know. A, on some CAD. And, I know. Yeah, the, the time this is going to take and the money it's going to cost us... Uh, Sorry That's, for the reminder. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it, it is what it is. Like uh, when we did that test trying to integrate the subwoofer, mm -hmm. and it was a, a total failure. Like an, a, I have nine hours of footage that no, no one's ever seen before. I should throw some of that in over the top of this, actually. Yeah. It was such a letdown. Because when I first built this room, and I had event opals up here, mm -hmm. and the opals came with this little software that you just plug in and it pumps some pink noise or whatever through, and like it was pretty rudimentary. Mm -hmm. But you could get an idea, and the room looked crazy flat. Yeah. Like really, really flat. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, I did it. It was a happy accident. Yeah. It's the best room in Nashville. You know, I was just like so pumped. And then the Trio 11s and dialing them in. I'm like, oh, the room isn't quite what I thought it was. Sure. And then we added the sub. And I'm like, this room has some real issues. Yeah. Like, and so every step that I've taken has shown me more and more what the issues in the room are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I mean, the nice thing is, is that you're very talented at what you do. So you can, well, you. you can learn the room and you can make some adjustments. But the thing is, is that the, the better your room is, mm -hmm. the less you have to fight it. You know? Exactly. And, and, and so if we can get this to be better and if you're already doing all these adjustments uh, for, for Atmos, we might as well. And I've tackle. already made the best music of my entire career in this room. Yeah. I've already had to fight less being in this room than I ever have in my whole career. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this just makes it better and better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Killer. Thank you, man. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate you. Yeah. It is time to fix this room.